Hello everyone, my name is Richard Prentice and I am the CEO of SG Global Support Services. Welcome to the first episode in our mini-series called The Future of Fundraising. At SG, we are enormously fortunate to work with some of the best charities and not-for-profit organisations from across the globe. And so, as we all are affected by the COVID-19 crisis in our family lives, and in our working lives. Uh, we wanted to take some time talking to some of these prominent fundraisers from across the globe to establish how this pandemic is also impacting on fundraising. And so in the first of these episodes, you'll be hearing from me. Uh, I will talk to you a little bit about what we're experiencing at ASG, uh, what we see our charity partners start to focus on and what they're impacted by uh, and perhaps most importantly uh, provide some insights uh, and expectations into what we think will happen as we transition out of this COVID-19 crisis and into the future of fundraising which for all of our sakes uh, we would hope is sooner rather than later. But before I talk to you a little bit about the impacts on fundraising, uh, firstly, just let me explain a little bit more about SG. SG is the world's largest donor management agency. We work in nine countries across three continents, and we are servicing a regular give donor base of about 3.3 million donors. Since our inception, we have processed donations in excess of 1 billion US dollars for some of the best charities and causes across the globe. So what have we seen so far when it comes to the impacts of the COVID-19 crisis on fundraising? If we look in the first instance at the existing donor base, this is everyday people um, like you and I uh, who have committed to a subscription type giving model whereby on a defined frequency, normally monthly, uh, a small amount of money will go from the donor to the charity on a long-term basis. Um, now this regular giving model has proven so far to be enormously resilient and robust as a mechanism for charities to fundraise. So even as economies have began to struggle, as people have been impacted financially through this pandemic, the regular give donor continues to give. What I mean by that is our collection rates are broadly normal if we compare them through the first two impacted months of COVID-19, comparative to what they were prior to the pandemic. So we're still collecting roughly the same amount as we were prior to the outbreak, which is fantastic news. The reason I stress that is because there are are certain charities who we work with who have not yet prioritized the development and the growth of a regular give donor base and instead have perhaps focused on corporate giving or giving from high net worth individuals which are both fantastic ways to fundraise but they tend to be impacted faster than we have seen certainly from the model whereby we have lots of people giving small amounts of money that's not to say that in the coming months as economies continue to struggle and perhaps people feel the impact uh, of the crisis longer term on their finances and as a consequence of hardship perhaps need to review their outgoings and cut back on certain costs. Uh, one of the costs that they choose to cut back on may be their regular commitment to charity giving. In perhaps two, three, four months time, we start to get a fairer reflection on the impact of COVID-19 on regular givers. So whilst the impact to the existing donor base may so far have been quite small. The impact to charities' efforts to find and recruit new regular give donors has been extremely significant. In most of the markets globally, we have seen the recruitment channels, um, which have been the primary source uh, of finding and acquiring new donors on our regular give basis, have either stopped 
or suspended temporarily in line with social distancing and stay at home advice. This has been uh, a real challenge for charities and for recruitment channels alike. We have seen certain examples where improvisation and adaptation has worked, perhaps taking what was previously face-to-face -face fundraising and flipping it into a telesales capacity has worked well in certain markets through certain recruitment channels. We've seen certain digital marketing efforts um, which have provided lots of one-time campaigns for charities and we've also seen some great examples of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising through platforms like Simply Giving that work very well but overall uh, charities recruitment of new donors has been significantly impacted and we're seeing uh, about 20% of the normal volume recruited uh, on a monthly basis throughout March and April comparative to the months prior to the COVID-19 crisis. So now let me talk to you a little bit about my expectations as we look forward um, and hopefully begin to transition uh, out from this COVID-19 crisis. Number one, I would expect face-to-face -to, -face to bounce back. Uh, I would expect the primary recruitment channel for all of our charities to return to form. I think the fundraisers that have been out of the field or had activities suspended uh, will come back with a fervor and a desire to make up for lost time. And I think taking into account perhaps some new practices that accommodate social distancing and how we might um, have our conversation with donors face-to-face, -face, how we might sign our donors up uh, face to face, these things may change. Number two, uh, it's really important as we exit uh, this pandemic that digital marketing as a means of bringing in regular give donors begins to come to the fore. Now, there's no challenge that digital fundraising is a great mechanism uh, for bringing one-time donations for emergency response for specific campaigns, but it hasn't yet demonstrated that it is a great provider for high volume, high quality long-term givers and so at SG we will certainly be spearheading uh, the challenge into making sure that we invest in digital acquisition um, and digital fundraising for regular givers in the coming weeks and months. We will invest more in that channel than we've invested before and we will look to provide charities with a solution to help backfill some of the gap in their recruitment volumes that has occurred uh, as a result of COVID-19. So, Digital needs to come to the fore as a provider for regular gift donors. What will also be very important in the coming months is charities' use of the telesales channel and fundraising via the phone. So that's about tapping into your lapsed donor base as an opportunity to reactivate those donors towards a new pledge. It's about contacting donors who have perhaps gifted one time previously and trying to convert them onto regular gift programs. It's about contacting your supporter groups and um, your volunteer groups and approaching them for financial aid uh, and it's also about lead conversion through the telephone so a lead that was perhaps generated um, on Instagram or Facebook uh, being fulfilled um, through telesales and the use of telesales and contact centres in the coming months will no doubt uh, be a very important mechanism for charities to backfill uh, some of the gaps in their recruitment. We would also expect some new channels to come forward in the coming months, uh, like exploring YouTube giving um, and giving through TikTok as a mechanism. We're interested to see how these channels contribute towards charities' fundraising efforts and reinvigorating some more mature and established channels like direct mailing and in particular DRTV um, so that the charities have a diverse approach across channels for how they split up their fundraising efforts. And that's something that SG were passionate about and we continually advise charities to try and have that channel diversity in their fundraising programs it's going to be really important in the coming months in particular when you have that donor base maximizing your payment and collection cycle from that donor base is really important so this is about the number of retries that you may have on a monthly basis to collect the debit the resubmission attempts when the debit goes wrong uh, these are all really critical operational processes that are key in making sure that you maximize the available revenue from your existing donor base so strategically planning your collection cycle is very important. 
Uh, let me talk a little bit about what else I see is very important. Looking at your variable costs is now more important than it's ever been before. We want charities to be in a position where their cost structure falls in line and is proportionate to their income through donations. So removing any large fixed costs as we move through uncertain times and as we fast forward, and let's assume there will be a slight drop in the amount of money being fundraised, let's hope not, but let's assume so, you want to make sure that your costs are in a position, that the costs that you have to administer your donor base, to retain your donor base, they are in a position to fall in line and be proportionate to the amount of income that you have coming into the charity. So at SG, we've always provided our charity partners with a variable cost structure that lets costs fall in line with the rate of collection. So that is very important. Um, making sure as well that your payment cycles are managed brilliantly, that you're doing everything within your existing base to manage your retries and your resubmission attempts when a payment goes wrong. We're also recommending that charities spend time working alongside their recruitment channels. Spend time supporting your recruitment channel during this difficult period. It's really important that the channels that have been so effective in providing us with so many donors for so long are given the best opportunity to do so again in the future. So it's really important that you spend time understanding their challenges and work together in partnership so that we're prepared to recommence recruitment at the earliest opportunity. I'm also recommending that charities now more than ever spend time thanking their donors for their financial support, especially through this period of uncertainty. Like I said previously, at SG we get to work with some of the best charities and best not-for-profit organisations in the world, but the work that these guys get to do is funded by other people and so it's exceptionally important uh, that the donor base receives that recognition, receives that gratitude. So spend time engaging with your donors and saying thank you. Closing from me, hopefully you found this first short episode in the future of fundraising useful. I look forward to bringing you some content from our fundraising partners in the coming weeks. And again, uh, hopefully you will find that of use too. In the meantime, I wish you all well. Uh, stay at home, stay healthy, and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Bye-bye.